Welcome to Master Networks. So what is Master Networks? It's a membership network of learning-based, service-oriented entrepreneurs and business leaders. Members meet weekly in local chapters to connect with each other, share business referrals, and receive business training to help impact their business growth. Being a member also gives you access to our online university, where you can learn from many other business training resources. You will also have access to world-class training events, such as business development workshops and our annual conference, Connect, a two-day event featuring keynote speakers, breakout sessions, networking, and more. Members also benefit from our national revenue share program called Affiliate Rewards, so you can earn $10 every month for every member you sponsor. To be a member, you pay just $49.95 a month, along with a one-time application fee with no long-term contract. To learn more or register, please visit us online at masternetworks.com. Master Networks, for business leaders, connect, share, prosper. Well, we all heard that the politicians up in New York City got just livid because Amazon wasn't gonna pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. They got tax credits from the state and the city of New York to locate there. And there was about $10 billion in credits that was given. The same rules that apply to Amazon and to Netflix and a lot of the big technological players now apply to you. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson. I bring you successful entrepreneurs, add valuable wisdom to your journey, and help you succeed. Welcome to Connect, Share, and Prosper. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. I'm super excited to be with you today. We're going to have a really interesting topic discussed on this episode of Connect, Share, Prosper. Let me introduce my guest, and we'll dive right in. Uh, my guest is Richard Cole, and uh, Richard is an entrepreneur. He's started and guided companies across several industries. Richard started his career in the outdoor advertising business uh, in 1975 and has led six successful business turnarounds. Additionally, Richard brings experience in developing independent business owners as the franchisor of one of the nation's fastest growing computer franchises from 2000 to 2008. His company was prestigiously ranked among, among Entrepreneur Magazine's Franchise 500 for seven years. Um, presently, Richard is a business consultant working with small and medium-sized businesses to recover profits in overpaid taxes and unclaimed credits. Please help me welcome to this episode of Connect Share Prosper, Richard Cole. Richard, welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Chaz. Good to be with you. Yeah, good to be with you. I think this is an interesting timing topic uh, considering the economic climate we're in, what are you seeing right now from your perspective uh, economically with entrepreneurs around the country? Interesting. Most entrepreneurs right now failed to plan for the downturn in their cash flow. Yes. It's not because they're not good entrepreneurs entrepreneurs aren't detail oriented yes and they tend to as you know kind of go from hot topic to hot topic to hot topic and nobody seemed to prepare for that and of course every entrepreneur that needs cash needs it when now, now. yeah <laughs> so i'm swamped yeah i can imagine uh, well, let's talk about what you're swamped doing because right. people listening today, if you're an entrepreneur, you're a business owner, you're going to want to listen and pay close attention. Some of you who followed have been, uh, you know, maybe part of our business success summit. Um, some of the other things you're familiar, maybe you've heard of Richard, you've seen some of the things we've done together. Uh, if you haven't, uh, please listen up because I know for me, what we're going to talk about put tens of thousands of dollars in my pocket this year. Uh, again, disclaimer, every situation and case is different, but listen up because what we're going to talk about is important. So what you do is you help businesses who have overpaid, right? In taxes and unclaimed credits. Now, immediately the, the, the antennas go up and go, yeah, but I have a, I have an accountant that took care of all that. I'm sure I didn't overpay. Right. Wrong. Right. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Tell us well, why. It, wouldn't it be nice if that was the case? 
Right. And, and doctors always get the diagnosis right too. So look, your accountant is probably spot on. And for what they do, they are probably fabulous. However, the rules of the road changed in 2015. Most accountants, most businessmen know of what we're about to discuss, but they don't know what to do with it. Yes. Okay. So there was what is called the PATH Act of 2015, P-A-T-H Act. Yes. of 2015 so I signed into legislation and made a permanent part of the tax code by Barack Obama won't dive into that deep if you want to google it and do some due diligence google path act uh, 2015 what that did is it changed the very definition of the qualified research act activities uh, that are necessary to participate in in order to claim research and development tax credits. Just that simple. Yeah. All right. Now, heretofore, you had to have what are called contemporaneous records. Uh, those contemporaneous records were not unlike what you would keep if you were a realtor and you were running around trying to show people houses. You'd keep your mileage chart. Right, right. Well, in the research and development business, that contemporaneous record keeping has to do with uh, Chaz is working on this particular protein and how it applies to this compound. And these are the hours and this is what I paid him. It doesn't, it's, it doesn't matter what the outcome was. It's what you were participating in. All right. Now, when the laws changed, the laws said you don't have to have the contemporaneous record keeping. But if you don't have the contemporaneous record keeping, just like you're keeping mileage on a car, it's, it does, you don't get to start with the bar here. You have, yeah, to, right. you have to start with the bar here. So you start lower. But what it did is it made tax credits in the world of research and development available to over 95% of the small and medium-sized businesses in the United States. I hope here everyone listening the- just just like just got antenna up 95 percent of the businesses because as soon as you start talking research and development i know when i first heard about this i went well i don't i don't really do research and development was my mindset well that was my thought i don't really Mm -hmm. do research and development but so pay attention if you're if you own a business listen to what we're going to talk about right here because statistically 95 percent of these businesses out there qualify under some uh, research and development so So take lab coats and microscopes exactly out of the equation just Forget it. So the law says if you make something or make something better, start with a raw product and you make it better. If there is a process by which you do business and through experimentation, trial and error, you work to make the process more effective, that's the second thing that has to be qualified. Mm. The third thing that has to be qualified is what you do or the process that you use to do it by technological in nature. So what does that mean? It means, do you use computers and computer technology? Right. Computer science. Tell me a business that can operate if their computers go down. I I get tickled all the time because, you know, I'll have a fast food franchisee on the telephone and just, he'll say, I don't do any research and development. I don't qualify. And I'll say, well, what do you start with? Well, I start with raw hamburger. Do you cook it? You took a product and you made it better. Right. Now, you also have variations on the theme and you have a process by which you determine what the market wants. Mm. You also have a process by which you take orders. You have a process technologically of how those orders get included on your, in your software and on your hard drive, keep up your inventory, keep up your P&L, right to the minute, right? Yep. And finally, all of those things reduce uncertainty. So -hmm. what's uncertain? What is it you're trying to eliminate? Failure. What is it that entrepreneurs do very well? (laughs) Try to get so creative, they make it worse. Yeah, so, you know, good entrepreneurs fail three or four times before they ever, you know, hit a stand up double. 
right. and they're not happy with the stand up double. Right. So they go back to the batter's box and they try to hit the home run. Yep. So there's nothing wrong with that, except that they're not detail oriented and they're not taking advantage of some of the rules as they've changed. Yes. So 95% of all small and medium sized businesses qualify. So I just went through the four. Yeah, there was four items. Let me restate. Okay. So you talked about so, making it better, improving a process. Uh, techn- technology and nature of what you yeah. do, and you reduce uncertainty. Now, my question, Richard, and I think everyone listening to this immediately says, so I have to check the box on all four of those? The the answer is if you check the box on one, you are going to check the box on the other three. Got it. it it's, it's impossible to check the box on one and not check the box on other three. So let's talk real quick. Let's just Let's just name four or five business classifications yeah. that qualify. Let's do it. How about if you're a roofer? You put okay. new roofs. Do you think you just go up and slap those shingles on there? No. There's yeah, I always I always laugh and say I mean, I've seen roof. a few roofs that look like that maybe that yeah, was yeah, the yeah, case, yeah, but I get it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, you know, it, it, it putting a roof on is all about geometry. Hmm. And you it, and the more uh, pitches there on a roof, the more uh, For sure. peaks and valleys there on the roof, the more that you have to use a CAD program to make certain that you've got everything cut the right way so that it all comes together and the water goes where you want it. Okay. Yep. So all of that, interestingly enough, you wouldn't think the guys that put roofs on uh, would qualify for R&D. They do. They yeah. qualify for research and development. Uh, so fast food restaurants, they all qualify. Unless mm-hmm. your mom and pop operating out of a cigar box, you qualify for research and development tax credit. Mm-hmm. Take the average Chick-fil-A, raw piece of chicken, you make a chicken sandwich. How many different ways do you make the chicken? Do you know that it takes two years for Chick-fil-A to bring something to market? Wow. Two years before they bring it to market. How many lines... How many, you've been, been to a Chick-fil-A. It's typically, oh, yeah. used to be one line. Two car lines and wide two. at least. And now it's sometimes three. And the really cool thing about it is now they've got iPads or tablets out. And there's a way that they, they've got it figured out how everybody merges together. And they're now shoving product out of two windows because they take your credit card in line. So you see all the process that had to be thought about. Yep. The trial and error. How many Amazing. times do you think they got it wrong? Oh, thousands. Okay. So a lot of those guys would like never to open the dining room again. Why? Yeah. Because it's more efficient to shove the chicken sandwich out the two windows. Yes. 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 Yeah. You're not having to clean anything. They literally improved the process, make it better. Yes. So what's the uncertainty? Hmm. Well, the uncertainty was unemployment. So how do we eliminate? Well, if they're getting more chicken out the windows, then that guy that is the franchisee is able to keep folks employed. Hmm. It's good. If you're employed, then you're spending your money. Some and you're paying taxes, somebody else, goods and services, and around and around the world goes. All right, so that's a fast food franchise. Um, a doctor, now general practitioner, doesn't work. An orthopedic surgeon does. Mm. Why wouldn't a general practitioner do? He doesn't do any research and develop. Right. Okay. He he he's there to make sure that you put. Um, you, you got all your inoculations and that your lab work's been checked and so on and so forth. But if he hears something wrong, he's either going to send you to a cardiologist or he's going to send you to an orthopedic surgeon. So if he sends yeah, you to, sends an it out to the specialists, surgeon, they're the ones that are researching. That's the specifics, right. right. So if you have to go to an orthopedic surgeon, believe it or not, those guys are really carpenters. Mm. They have MD after their name, but right. But they get so jazzed up in the operating room when they're doing a hip or a knee because it's got to be just right. Otherwise, somebody doesn't walk. Correct. 
Um, okay, I'll tell, tell a quick story on my wife. She had to have a hip replaced five or six years ago. And she had a cute little wiggle. And the um, orthopedic surgeon came out after surgery and he said, hey, Richard, um, did you know your wife had one leg that was like, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch longer than the other? And I said, well, yeah, that's probably what gave her a cute little wiggle. And he said, well, she won't have that anymore because I made the leg safely. <laughs> it's all Precision. about research and development. Yeah. Those guys, they are carpenters and they use they use the latest scientific technology in what they're going to implant and they use all kinds of, of uh, geometry. They're engineers. And right. Art- so, uh, you know, that's uh, those are doctors, cardiologists work, dentists work. Have you ever seen two cavities the same? No, not me. Two crowns. They have to take an impression. Right. You know, now they do 3D imaging. All technology. Yeah. Yeah. And then they make it. Yeah. While you're sitting there. So, you know, why is all of this important? Well, we all heard that the politicians up in New York City got just livid because Amazon wasn't going to pay any taxes. Mm-hmm. They got tax credits from the state and the city of New York to locate there. And there was about $10 billion in credits that was given. Now you say, okay, oh my gosh, that's just, how can that be? You know, we, you know, Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world worth a trillion dollars now. But the fact of the matter is, that $10 billion over the same period of time that those tax credits were taken, we're going to generate $25 billion in payroll taxes. For sure. All the people spent. employed. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, how much of a mistake did those politicians make? You know, there's politics and you know, failing to do the math. Right. Okay. Right. So the same rules that apply to Amazon and the Netflix and a lot of the big technological players now apply to you. And it's not just that they apply, but now you know that they're there because that's the thing, you know, these big companies, they have the teams that are all aware of this stuff and they're using it to their advantage. But most of the local business, small don't know that this exists for them. And that's why we're bringing this to their attention. So, right. So, okay, so let's assume, and we'll talk about how people can find out, but let's assume I qualify, right? I I can check the boxes, I qualify. What does it look like? What's the process when we're talking about tax credits for for a business owner that qualifies for this? What's that look like? If you give me five, 10 minutes of your time, I can tell you whether or not you're gonna qualify and whether or not you're going to have a recapture of overpaid taxes. I'm not going to be able to tell you how much because we haven't done a deep dive into your tax return. But what we will do if we determine that you qualify, and I'm going to ask, you know, some questions. Do you own your own business? How is your corporate structure? Is it an S, a C, an LLC? Did you pay more than $35,000, $40,000 a year in tax each year for the last three years? Oh, by the way, First time into the foray, you get to look back three years. Which is incredible. So can, yeah. So so I'm gonna ask those questions. And if and if you if you're able to check the boxes to those questions, then we will do what's called a no cost feasibility study. We're gonna take your tax returns, three years of your business, three years of your personal, and we're gonna fly over them at ten or fifteen thousand feet. And we're gonna look down at them and we're gonna say, our best estimate is that if we move through this process, you're going to receive this much money back. And oh, by the way, because it's overpaid taxes, it's going to come back to you tax free. Mm. You've already paid the taxes, on. right? So it's going to come back to you tax free. And oh, by the way, because it's an overpayment of taxes to Uncle Sam, they're going to pay you 6% interest on it, right? Lady yesterday, she got a fat check, she owed us eight thousand dollars but the interest that she was paid was 4200 wow so did that help pay for the work well see we don't charge for the interest payment we charge on the recapture of the hard tax dollar yeah let's just talk talk about this since you brought it up about the charge i mean you're, you're not getting paid unless the client's getting 
Oh, capture, right. Capture, right. We, we, we're going to do a feasibility study. No money has changed hands. Yep. If you like the feasibility study is really for one reason and one reason alone, Chaz, it's going to tell me and the client whether or not the pile of money in the street is large enough to make this worth everybody's while. Yes. And if it's not, I'll be happy to tell you because I don't want to spend the money internally and I don't want you to come out on the short end of the stick. I would rather do business with you next year. So we're going to look at it. If you like what you see, then I will at that point ask you to sign a consulting agreement and an engagement letter. You still haven't paid us any money with those contracts. We're going to amend your tax returns. And you say, Oh no, my accountant's going to kill me. No, we're not going to change any un of the underlying accountancy. We are going to submit to the internal revenue service, the original return, a reconstructed return. It's a, if we had applied this is what it probably would have looked like. The IRS wants you to take baby steps. Right. And then the final thing that goes in the package is the amended return. So it's one, two, three. And when it hits an examiner's desk, they give you one of three answers. Yes, no, or more information, please. Right. So there's only so, one of three things that can happen when they when the examiner gets that on their desk. Right. I remember that was a big question I had for you, right? Like, it just, you know, anything to do with taxes and IRS, I'm always like, oh, what am I, what am I exposing myself to? And you were like, it's either yes, no, or I need more information. That's right. Right. The, the world of tax credits is not gray. You either right. qualify or you don't. Right. And the, the folks, the, the accountants that are part of our team that do this have been doing it for more than 20 years. They don't go all the way back to 1981, but they do go, they do go back to 2005. Mm -hmm. So they're familiar with the old way, the traditional methodology, which was with the contemporaneous records. And they're familiar with everything in the PATH Act and the uh, alternative simplified credit calculation, yes, um, as it's called. And those, when tax returns prepared by people that specialize this, go in to the Internal Revenue Service, the examiners see that what they've submitted is in the middle of the road and it's within right. the norm for that industry category. Now, yeah. I want to tell you why this is so difficult for people to talk about. Yeah. Number one, your accountant doesn't want to lose you as a client. Right. Right. And I can't be there to tell him or her that they're not going to lose you as a client mm. because we don't do general accountancy. We only do tax credits. As a matter of fact, I'll Which be happy important. to do business with your CPA. Right. So that's just tragic. So yeah. you're probably going to get a stay away from this. Don't do that. And if you realize you've been told to stay away from something that's extraordinarily legitimate, then you begin to get angry. Right. Because the question is how much have you been leaving, leaving on the right. table? Right. Right. Okay. And you know, when this starts, when I can, I mean, that's how I felt. Them. That's how I felt when I first start, started talking to you. I was like, why wasn't right. this brought to my attention? And it's just simply because my accountant does a really good job on my taxes, like mm -hmm. putting those together, but this isn't something that they're, keenly aware of or at all. And so you're this specialist that comes in and helps this happen and puts this together. Um, and, and I, I just, just sort of those of you listening, I want you to, I want you to check into something on this. When I, when I met Richard, I mean, I was probably one of those people that many, like many of you that went, yeah, I don't think I qualify. And I sort of self-centered. I just, I, I just said, you know, I, I'm not going to reach out to you anymore. And many of you might be doing that. We're going to include it, the link in here where you can reach out, put your name and phone number and email, and just uh, Richard will reach out to you. But I would encourage you to do that because what happened is you and I met, in fact, several times. He, Richard was good. He kept coming back to me saying, well, you know, you answered and you checked all the boxes and here's how that looks, et cetera. Let's do the no cost feasibility. And I said, okay. And I, I got the tax returns together, sent those over. And I, I want to say it was like less than two weeks or so uh, in my memory, that you came back and said, okay, here's what it looks like. And because you know, we went back three years and I looked at it and I went, wow, you, you got to be kidding me. This is what's coming back to me. 
you're like, yep, all you got to do is sign these documents and this is what it's going to come back. And, you know, our fees taken out of this and, and et cetera. And I went, okay, wait, wait, let's go through this one more time. Cause when, when you, you either feel like you should have known this, uh, you've been cheated. Why didn't somebody else catch this? And like, here's the thing, just put all those feelings aside. It's irrelevant because your bank account doesn't have feelings. And when the money comes back, uh, the feel, the only feeling you have is like, wow, that's pretty cool. But what I want people to really listen and understand is this right now in the economic climate we're in, people are scrambling. Many businesses are scrambling. Right. You're either in a bucket where you're like, I need to go find money. And so you're reaching out to government programs or you're going to your bank trying to get a loan. And if you need the money right now, good luck trying to get a loan because typically the bank won't give you the money when you need it. Right. So that's generally how it goes. It's exactly how it goes. Right. And so, which is so interesting, but, and then the other side of it is, well, Hey, I'm doing okay. So I don't really, that's, that's a fool's game because if this is your money that you've overpaid, you should go out and get it and sort of, you know, re, you know, get, get a robust savings going if you're not in the spot that you need it. So either way, if you're in a spot where you need the revenue you and you think you qual you, you should reach out. And even if you're doing well financially and having the best year ever, you should reach out and, and right. connect on this, right? Right. So, yeah, so do it. <laughs> why? Why? Why do we need to do this? Aside from the fact that it's your money, right? Why would you need to do this? Well, let's see. We're supposed to all have four to six months of emergency savings, right? Correct. Right. And you ought to do that for yourself, and you ought to do that for your business. For business, yeah. Well. Yep. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is you you should have worked out a line of credit for your business when you didn't need it so that you could pull on it. You didn't do that. This is your line of credit. Yep. You exactly. need to get it back. The Internal Revenue Service had, was shut down for 10 weeks, and they are working overtime right now to get caught up. And my phone rings all day long with, do you know anything about my taxes? And the answer is no, right. I don't know anything about right. your taxes. When you least expect it, they'll be in your mailbox. Isn't that what happened to you? Yeah. I mean, it was interesting. Um, I think the checks came, uh, they came three, three separate checks for the each year. Right. Right. And I want to say, uh, I, I want to say my wife opened it and was like, Hey, w w what is this? Did we make a mistake? What happened? Cause I, I don't even know how much I shared with her about what we were doing. And what's interesting for me, I'll share the personal experience. So I built a new home two years ago. So the first year, right, the tax, the property tax gets assessed and I get this tax and, and I'll just say it this way. I'm going to share the amounts, but, uh, it was over $10,000, my tax assessed here in Texas property tax. And I literally had two weeks that said, you can pay the full amount or we can assess it to your mortgage payment. And you know, your mortgage payment is going to go way up every month. What was so cool is two or three days later, the first two checks showed up and I was able to just use that money, no extra out of my savings, no extra just to pay that down and pay that off uh, right out of the gate. So uh, it's just not that difficult to, to of a process. You know, Richard and his team do all the heavy lifting and we wanted to bring this to you because as we do on this, this podcast, as we bring you specialists and experts, people who share the successes and the challenges of going on. And we bring to you resources that help you as a business owner. And this is one of those resources that too many people are letting pass by. I didn't know about it. I didn't even know about it. And I, I, you know, I like to think I'm pretty plugged into what goes on in the business world, but I was unaware of this tax credit. Uh, even all the tax specialists I had talked to never mentioned it. Chaz, in the spirit of, being a good steward of somebody else's money. You need to have that four to six months of emergency fund. Right. But there's something else that Master Networks introduced to the mastery program. Correct. That was infinite banking or yes. as you as you you know we talk about filling the bucket up yep. or overfunding a life insurance policy. So yep you can use it as a financial vehicle. When are you in your life as a business owner going to have the opportunity to grab 
30 to 40 percent of the taxes that you paid in for three years right and get a check tax-free probably never right this is it and if you're under 40 years old life insurance is still very very inexpensive master networks has the program by which you take advantage of all of these things and guess what it sets you up for financial success and independence so good guys listen you're you're listening to this today I, what i want you to do is click on the link we've included in the show notes etc on how to contact richard it's simple name email phone number he'll reach out to you set up a quick time to hop on the phone and in five to ten minutes let's just call it ten you're going to know whether you qualify or not or whether he needs more information but most of the time you're going to know right out of that 10 minutes if you qualify or not and how to take the next step to the no cost feasibility this is what we call a clue this is what a clue looks like call it your message that you needed to hear today to help you grow the business expand uh you know get financially secure uh with your your finances so richard I mean, there's, we could spend hours talking about this, but really what people need to do is just act. They need to reach out to you and take the next step. Anything else you want to add to, to tie the loop on this? Yeah. Uh, the, what I want to share is that sometimes we have a gift that falls in our lap and we don't know what to do with it. And so what we do is nothing. Right. This is a gift that has fallen into your lap courtesy of congress and you need to pick it up it's just so that you get get an understanding the longer it takes you to get in touch with me you're adding days and weeks before you get your check back it's exactly from the right revenue service it's exactly right richard honored to have you on the podcast today thank you for all the wisdom Guys, as we do every week, every Monday, noon central, we bring successful people and resources like what we heard today from Richard Cole, who shared with us exactly what you need to do to take the steps uh, to take advantage of these research and development tax credits. Again, tune in every week, Monday, noon central on the Master Networks Facebook page so we can continue to share successes, strategies, and resources for you every single week to help you build a big a business beyond or build legacy, excuse me, beyond the business. So till next time, we'll see you on the next episode of Connect Share Prosper. Be well. Stop hoping for your business to grow and start mastering the formula for success that every entrepreneur needs to grow their business. Join us for 5 Plus 1 Mastery, where every week we go in depth on how to grow your business the right way. Learn more at 5plus1mastery.com.